going on everybody it's poodle back with another madden ultimate team video guys and today we got huge huge franchise news now if you guys have been following long enough you guys have been following the madden news you know that they're going to be releasing weekly news we have an open beta in terms of like oh, an expansive beta i shouldn't say open it was kind of technically closed but it's very exciting how they're doing it we're able to pretty much test out the entire game now like i said to, the, to everyone else beforehand when people are saying their franchise looks similar that franchise mode that we have in the beta is not actually the real franchise mode that is like kind of a, a slightly different looking copy and paste from last year but the real features are coming either later in the beta or they're going to put it in the full game release but today we do have all the news guys now i'd say for the last like, maybe five or six madden straight franchise has not changed it's been the same screen same features they've actually taken away features it's gotten worse but this is the first time like hashtag fix madden franchise i think it worked guys they actually revamped madden franchise and they added a live service feature which is really important which means that throughout the year it will be updating constantly so it's not like one of those features like how every franchise every year they drop it and that's what you're stuck with the entire year until next man it's a it's like ultimate team it's, it's a live service they have an actual server to it where they're actually dropping you content like they you know like how you get those interviews in like nba 2k or like connected franchise and it's the same interview every single time this year they will be adding more scenarios throughout the year so it'll almost feel like every season is getting it can be different one year you're getting these interviews one year you're getting another one uh the new menus added so it's going to be being revamped throughout the year which is super exciting for just about everyone but now the thing is let's get into this before we do make sure to subscribe turn that noti bell give this video a big thumbs up as always if you haven't already comment down below let me know what your favorite feature of this new franchise uh updates and news are going to be for me personally it's probably gonna be the scouting which will probably you'll, you'll see let's get into it so starting here guys we have franchise features in madden nfl 22 at launch new franchise staff and staff points which is exciting now you can hire your scouts your assistant coach your coordinators which we're going to affect your on-field play similar to 2k my league um new weekly strategy dynamic game day integration another good feature because again you're going against a guy like let's say you know when you're in an online franchise like i am you know who you're playing weekly you know their tendencies but the thing is how do you like in, in real life you're going against a run heavy team you, you you prepare your team you practice against that playbook you get them ready to, to you know hit this hole go against these plays but in madden you, you can't you can't tell your guys to do something a certain week so you get into the game and all game they're giving up the same hole and you really there's no way to tell them not to do that you just gotta hope you play the right defense for it which isn't always gonna work so this is cool like so you know they're gonna be running power on you all day you you um you put up the strategies to stop and prevent power o runs and that's what you focus on that week which makes them get out of that game plan it's gonna be very strategic if it works i like it Enhanced season, uh, enhanced season engine i like that franchise hub updates tuning and more so you guys this is a staff management screen which you guys may have seen already so you hire your head coach you can hire your offensive coordinator your defensive coordinator and player personnel now there is gonna be more to that like i said there's your scouts now the thing is here you can fire them at any point so let's say halfway through the season like you notice that you're not liking the offensive coordinator stuff or there's a, there's a better one on the market fire him hire a new one there's goals and there's going to be talent trees as well you see head coach over there um i guess that's going to be an option so this is when you're looking through now here's the thing there's going to be talent trees so you're going to be able to go ahead and kind of like if you ever play like an rpg game like a world of warcraft or something like that or one of those games and like you can go either left for magic right for melee down middle for defensive and you take your path of what you want to upgrade your guy to be similar to coaching you're going to be able to pick how like, you want it to be better at defense offense scouting whatever and that's going to go based on the way you play and what you think and once you go one way you really can't come back the other way so keep that in mind it's going to be very different for every single person on how their coach is going to be built so you go like so just like 2k you go through you see okay so Nagy, pinnell burns uh you know pinnell and burns are fired these guys are hired these are available joe thune a head coach apparently unless it's someone else um Suggs, hightower they were um hired fired hired fired so there's gonna be a lot of options for coaches you know who you want sometimes you could just go with the fun pick like bring a legend out of retirement like let's say there was a randy moss up there just hire him as a head coach here are the trees so player growth decrease multi-week injury recovery time definitely a good one guys and then you can go staff modifications on the right and you can go talent trees per you know coordinator coordinator personnel head coach now again that's a big one i hate multi-week injuries i hate getting injuries it kills your stats kills awards definitely a good one then again defensive coordinator we have practice makes perfect going to probably be a, you know practice related with getting xp and then trench play is going to be how well they actually play in the field so you can always go to get i guess the right field will be more about development the left tree will be more about uh, actual play same thing here and then player personnel trades versus contracts now again if i remember correctly once you go one way you can't go the other so i wonder if you have to focus on one or can you if you finish one but again if you guys do know how this usually works typically if you play franchise long enough you end up maxing most of your stuff out like award wise i wonder how it'll be here but it's definitely cool a trade discount on older players which actually won't be good so if you're an online franchise guys you don't want to touch the trades 
because it's kind of uh you're gonna be trading with people manually so it won't it won't really make a difference you want to go stick contract wise make sure everyone's nice and cheap for you now here's one of the new things that i think is super cool so you can send your scouts as national western central northeast and southeast now this is pretty cool because in, in years past guys like this year scouting's dumb like it's it's the dumbest thing you just go there it shows you the top three stats showed you a and b's you draft the guy all the stats are 70s and 80s it's not even a and p and they could be a normal dev they could be they could be good you know what i mean like it's just so it's random literally you, there's no skill to it you just you just pick and hopefully you know you just aim for speed or you just aim for the top guy on the board this is going to be more of a moving draft board like real life kind of like you know trevor lawrence here and then this guy here and then this guy here like all in order and that's going to be like what the board is and you go based on that now i wonder what they didn't they didn't mention dev games but they did mention breakout games like they mentioned breakout scenarios i'm assuming that's what they they're referencing um they said it like in a weird way though but anyways back to this so top prospects these are the number one two three four and five ranked prospect now the difference in this one it would show you the top five guys technically and then you click on them and it was like red red green so like those aren't really the top five it's pretty much just a draft board open to players this actually shows you based on colleagues like who were the one two three four and five style guys tells you your strengths and weaknesses um your area scout ted davis tier one and you want to get them up in tiers so you can be better go here again scout hiring scout assignments you can reassign them to a different place put them here uh this guy's expertise is quarterback so you know you, you probably quarterback a wide receiver so you want to send them somewhere where you're looking at quarterbacks and wide receivers so again this is important let's say the number one quarterback is in you know in, in fsu down in florida you want to send your scout to the um i believe southeast you want to send them to the southeast now the thing is if you go ahead and send your, you know bud mckenzie on the right over here to the southeast who's a middle linebacker quarterback scout he's not going to properly assess that wide receiver so you want to make sure that you're sending them everywhere now let's just say there's two good corners in the west and two good corners on the east now you have to pick the ones you want most you only have one cornerback scout if you put them one way or the other way you're not gonna be able to scout them both or maybe you can it depends on much time and how early you start the scouting process um again tony swift number one player on the board quarterback he was originally number two and he moved up so again it's gonna be a moving draft board just like real life you know at one point baker mayfield was like the 10th pick then the seventh pick before you know he was the first overall pick by draft night and it tells you you can scout their talent and that's exciting guys because now you know nothing was worse in franchise than waiting all year for the rebuild getting your first round pick having picked 12 and 16 and you draft two guys in the normal devs and you overreach for them and they're right there at the top of the board right so here you see devon Patton's gonna be a 6 to 22 pick so if you have any kind of pick between 10 and 20 that's a solid place to take them completion if you get them to 100 completion guys you get all their stuff so it's not gonna be about scouting points anymore it's gonna be about your stick to your scouts just like 2k when you scout them to 100 scouting uh, completion you get all their information It'll even probably give you some actual stats, like tell you their speed or tell you their catching or something. But yeah, that's that's important though. These guys are projected top five, and this guy's a uh, six twenty-two talent. Now it doesn't mean he's not going to be a top five pick. It means that his overall is going to be between the six and twenty-two of players. Like he'll be like a seventy-seven, right? Seventy-six. So that's exciting because now it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna lead to less bust. You know what I mean? And, and less surprises. Like the guy who has picked thirty shouldn't oh, shouldn't be people that pick in the second or third round get those X factor guys because you never know when they're gonna come. It's just like a dice roll. You know, you shouldn't be screwing over the top teams as much. Now, yeah, there's going to be bust, but it does make it a lot more exciting to get your guy. You know what you want. You know what you need. And Because sometimes it makes more sense to trade those picks because I always trade my first round picks because I'm at a point where I've every time I draft a first round player, there they be, there's been good ones, but there's been other equally amount of bad ones. I'd rather just trade my picks for a guaranteed X Factor player. So this is going to make it a lot more exciting, especially for teams that aren't doing so well. Current players, uh, confirmed player selection. These are the players you want to have private workouts with that will confirm some of their stats. Again, super cool. So make sure, you know, you have pick seven. You know, these are the guys that will be available. You want to, you want to make sure you're only scouting the guys available. Don't just scout the first overall guy if you're not going to have him. Now I showed you this. Now these are the mock drafts. Where do you think they're going to go? That's super cool. Like, they'll tell you, you know, you're the, you're the Sands. You're getting Tony Abraham. It's cool for you to think about. Like, oh, you know, I haven't thought about him. You know, how's he looking, you know? Uh, head coach, develop players and staff with head coach talents for a new spin. Use staff points, build an elite roster. Yeah, okay, that's generic. So how to get some staff points. So win by 14 points or more, you get 10 staff points. Get to touchdowns in the first half, 10 staff points. Guys, staff points are going to be super easy to get. I mean, I've had I've had 100-point games on people in franchise. I've had 60. I usually, you know, against decent... Usually that I'm, I'm above, I, I usually kind of blow them out to a sense sometimes. So this should be easy for me. Now, if you're a guy who keeps it more close, you play more conservative, maybe not. But staff points, see, like I said, right there, I could easily, in some games, four passes in the first drive, two touchdowns. The only thing I don't like about it, I think it may incentivize me to do stupid stuff. Like, I may come out in the first drive looking for the four passes for my 10 staff points, and it may throw off the way I play. Uh, but otherwise, I could easily end up leaving a game with 50, 50 staff points out of this. I, I've done it before. I Just last night, I did this. I mean... I could easily see myself doing this. 
Uh, again, more more talent trees. Uh, this is for head coach again. Now here's another thing. So weekly strategy, which I I really really like. Again, you can set it for your practice so that you know you're 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 going to be focusing heavily on stopping inside runs. Now that actually will hurt you on play action. Uh, passes off the inside run and bounce and outside runs but you will be focused on inside runs but if you know your opponent you know they don't like outside runs they have a slower bigger back they're only going inside you can do that now you're versing a guy like saquon barkley maybe you don't focus on inside runs because it's going to hurt your outside maybe you focus on a conservative a conservative run plan right not inside runs that should be like a conservative one that maybe doesn't help as much against them but it's conservatively going to help against everything or maybe you just focus in solely on saquon barkley now again just a few more scenarios here run outside blitz prep throw it short throw it medium then there's your game plan you know the guy you play likes to play a deep cover four deep cover three he uh, backs him up you know you play a short game you know he likes to press all game you make sure you're focusing on your wide receivers going deep you know and beating it down now player health is a super big improvement that i actually do really really like oftentimes in franchise guys i call it like the week 12 curse every time week 12 comes around I i'm in the browns i lose miles gary he, he goes out with he tears his abdominal muscles six weeks out to playoffs my running back always hurts himself week 12 my wide receiver it's because by week 12 guys your players just like in real life are fatigued they only had one bye week they're tired but it doesn't show you that so for you they're just virtual players you don't you don't think like that right they're virtual players so you just go out there you do your normal you know your normal plays and they get hurt this now tells you look tyree kill is crazy fatigued by week 12 right he literally is on the verge of breaking down so what that means is that any any big hit he could probably get hurt so what you do is that week you make your game plan so where Tyree Kill plays, you know, only 70% of reps, just like real life. He's a little banged up. He's going to play. He's going to be more of a decoy today. So I come out, okay, I need to keep Tyree Kill healthy for playoffs. I give him one game, like, off or in practice. What you do is you can lay off the pads. So if you see here, uh, if you come, I'll go into that more of that as you get down. But in practice mode, you're actually able to go ahead and do, instead of full pads, you do just, just uppers for the day, make it a 50% uh, practice, like energy practice. And that will mean that Tyree Kill will start to gain his fatigue back. As well as in the game, okay, so Mahomes is good, Kelsey's good, Tyreek's dying. I'm going to focus on a tight end, uh, tight end approach that game and work more to the running back. And then Tyreek Hill gets back to normal and he's good for the rest of the season. And you avoid a lot of fluke injuries that way. And then over here, you know, you can see your offensive fatigue. And there you go. Full pads is your highest chance. However, there's also a higher injury chance and less fatigue recovery. So that's when you want to be like, do you still want all that XP or do you rather just call it easy for the week and get your uh, players back? Your offense after a game. A game. See, look, that's cool. So game plan boost. My game plan of, you know, going uh, a medium pass approach. We'll give Mahomes a plus five medium accuracy and give my line plus five blocking. That's super cool. It'll give my wide receivers plus two catch and traffic. So they get actual boost per week. And then look, McCole Hardman, knee cartilage tear in practice. So that kind of sucks. We definitely want to be careful of practice, I guess. Uh, these are, so these are halftime adjustments that they've added, which is just the game in general. At halftime, you know, you're, you're getting killed on the inside run. Your game plan wasn't working. You could change it. You could change it to run outside because that's where they that's where they're countering you. So you counter them back. Very interesting. So weekly strategy, choose a game plan, focus on offense. I mean, we went over this again. Um, select a new weekly goal. Okay. Another thing, new scenarios. So now we're going to have like press conference scenarios, just like 2K. But these will, you know, I know they get repetitive, but again, like I said, they have a live engine now, like a live server. So it's going to be updating weekly. So expect these to always be coming out. The new breakout scenario. So your quarterback can come out and say he really likes his new receiver, right? Dwayne Eskridge. They're building some nice chemistry and it's, it's, it's been showing up not in just in practice, but the games. So what happens is pretty much the quarterback can trigger a dev game for your wide receiver, essentially a breakout game. And then again, you go ahead and play the breakout game. And then here we go. Lamar Jackson, um, he's going to, he's been burned out with his legs, right? So you negate scrambling, limit passing, you know, what, what do you want to do against him? And that actually turns into other, uh, you know, games and scenarios, goals, shut out Los Angeles. And I like this a lot. So top players. So it shows the top player of the week on the home screen before, if you want to see, you have to go all the way to stats, RB, 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 go to stats, scroll down, check it out. This is going to be right here in your face you're going to see the standing street division everything's gonna be on the home screen before it was so the home screen showed one thing you needed then you gotta go rb for another thing rb for another thing this has a home screen where it shows your schedule your goals and the top stats for the week player of the week and then if you go on over you see the new stuff and the league you don't have to go you just have to go into awards go to position it goes to your team scroll up to nfl go to position it was such a, it was such a hassle some people didn't even care this is just like like fantasy stats right here Top three passers, top three rushers for the season, top three receivers, sack leaders. I think that's so awesome to see. It's just like, you know, NFL.com, pro football uh, focus, pro football reference. You know, you get to see everything you want in a small screen. I think that's going to be so cool, especially if you have a league leader. Shows the weekly schedule. So, you know, for commissioners, they know who's playing or not. Super, super cool, guys. And here you go, which is really cool again. The whole league. So when you're in a, when you're in a league, you want to know, like, what teams are open. You just check, okay, he's open, he's open. That guy played already. He can advance. Guys, overall, I think the franchise news is awesome. This video went pretty long, so I'm going to cut it here. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. 
Turn that noti bell. Give this video a big thumbs up as always. And if you haven't already, comment down below. What is your favorite feature of franchise? I'm out. Peace.